A man dabbed three fingers with white paint and then gently scratched, and the world-famous Adidas logo was born. He did this to distinguish the brand Puma, which was founded by his brother. In 1924, Adi was just a cobbler, obsessed with developing sneakers, thinking that one day the best athletes in the world would run in his sneakers. But back then, people didn't value sports and no one would spend money on a pair of sneakers. Adi was ridiculed. This day, the brother was full of injuries, suddenly said to Adi you make shoes I will sell, we do something great together, never again be ridiculed. It turned out that he was fired from the company, and ran into colleagues who laughed at Adi. The brother was furious, seeing his brother's determination. Adi was also energized, and the two brothers decided to join forces to do something big. But production needs money. The bank simply do not give the two brothers a loan. The brother is a businessman, almost convinced the governor. But the governor saw the shoes and then rejected them because the sneakers produced by Adi were too thin and he thought that such sneakers would break down after a few wears. The soccer balls of the time were heavy and big, and the toe had to have steel leather to protect the ankle. Adi, however, was convinced that people needed such thin and light sneakers to feel the soccer. И вы сами ты верите, что в таких бутсах можно хоть что-то забить. А если мяч намокнет, представьте, сколько он весит. Значит, выпусти мячи полегче. This way the two brothers failed, but the older brother did not give up. The next day. He personally pulled a cart of sports shoes to sell everywhere, going to the athletic field and soccer field. He introduced the shoes little by little and let everyone try them on. The athletes who put on the shoes all thought they were good. When my brother came back, the car was already sold out of sneakers, and 273 pairs had been sold in just two days. Do you know how Adidas Shoe Factory was born? The brother's business grew bigger and bigger. And at that time almost all the athletes in Germany wore Adi's light sneakers. The brother pulled Adi wanted to go to the bank again to cooperate. But Adi was not sociable and did not want to go. When his wife took the initiative to go instead of Adidas, and did not expect to succeed in getting the loan. Ten years later, Adidas annual sales reached 200,000 pairs. And the two brothers, once ridiculed, had become a giant in the German footwear industry. This day his wife suddenly asked to Adi, you can make such a small shoe. Adi understood instantly, and he hugged his wife with excitement. His brother and sister-in-law, however, did not seem to be happy, and his sister-in-law seemed to know some untold secret. The next day, my sister-in-law and brother said, you are too tolerant. People always say Adi sneakers, as if everything is done by him. The brother said he didn't care, but that's not true. This day the two brothers talked about the National Olympics. The brother wanted Adi's shoes to be worn only by German athletes in order to please the Nazis. Instead, Adi said, I only give the best athletes to wear, no matter where he comes from and what color he is. The sprint champion at the time was the black Jesse Owens. The brother strongly disagreed and his emotions completely exploded. Когда прислушивался к тому, что ты хочешь, когда ты только мастерил первые туфли, когда ты всем внушал, что успех нашей компании принадлежит тебе одному. Adi said to the black man, this is the sneaker I designed especially for you. The black man took the sneakers and couldn't help but admire them. He had never seen such light shoes. The black man won the world championship wearing Adi's shoes. He is Jesse Owens. Adi bet right, but his brother told Adi, this is what you did. You had to sponsor the black man. The government let our factory stop production. It turns out that this Olympics was a tool for Hitler's Nazi propaganda, but a black man won the gold medal and wore sneakers sponsored by his own country. The brother took Adi to the minister and begged him, who demanded that they could only produce 6,000 pairs of military boots per month in order to keep the shoe factory from closing. The brothers had to agree, and just then they received orders that one of them had to go to military service. Germany was in the middle of World War II, and even children were going to war. Adi said to his brother, the government wants me to produce shoes for them. I am not going to serve in the military. Again, my brother was angry. Why are you just irreplaceable to the company and I am not? You are trying to take this opportunity to squeeze me out. Adi went straight away without saying a word, and the brother had to go and join the war. But Adi also had a very miserable life. The entire shoe factory was reduced to Hitler's arsenal. Adi's dream gradually shattered. Can only wear their own sneakers late at night running alone. Looking into the distance, Adi thought of his brother. 
When World War II ended in 1945, his brother was lucky to survive. The Air Force came to Adi's shoe factory and found it full of rocket-propelled grenades. The officer directly ordered the destruction of the entire shoe factory. Adi hastily explained that we were forced to do it. We only made shoes. The officer did not believe. Just then the wife took out a photo of Jesse Jubbins and Adi, the black man who won the gold medal that year, was sponsored by Adi sneakers. The officer then believed them, and the factory was saved. But the brother was arrested. The officer said to him that the people around you snitched that you were a Nazi. The brother instantly thought of Adi. He explained to the officer that I risked my life to embrace the Communist Party and that at the Olympics, black people won gold medals wearing the shoes I provided and my brother made rocket-propelled grenades on his own. With that Adi was also caught in the office, and after an investigation both were acquitted, and when they arrived home both thought the other had snitched. At this point, the brother's wife surprisingly revealed a secret. Adi's son is actually the brother's. Adi asks his brother if this is true, but he doesn't say anything. They broke up completely and the company was split in two. The brother took away all the customer information and sales team, and the technical staff continued to follow Adi. The brother had the resources but no skills, so he had to find some shoemakers. Adi had the technology but not the customer resources. It was good that his wife, who had excellent sales skills, came back to the company. She said to Adi, you have to trust me. Adi was torn. He still chose to trust his wife. Did you know that Adidas and Puma are actually a family? 1984 Adi and his brother parted ways. The brother changed the brand name to Rudas, which is today's Puma, while Adi used his name plus his surname, officially naming the brand Adidas. The brother lacked expertise and the production of sports shoes always produced quality problems. At that time, the two logos were still the same. It led to Adi was always implicated. That's when Adi looked at the white paint on the pillar and had an idea. He called the players. He used his hand to wipe the white paint. To the shoes gently scratch, Adidas Classic 3 Bar was born. And that's when the brother's brand was officially changed to Puma, and also absorbed Adi's ball stud invention. Adi intended to sue his brother, but his wife brought the papers. The brother had sued him first and Adi was angry. The next day the manager told Adi again that the national team coach was looking for his brother to negotiate. Adi panicked. If his brother took down the national team, then they would have no market at all. He ran towards the train station, but the train had already left. The coach and his brother said 1,000 yuan for one box of Puma sneakers. The brother laughed and rejected the coach outright. Why would he waste his money on a team that only plays once every few years and loses in the preseason? Hearing this, the coach walked away in exasperation. And just as Adi was getting depressed, the coach took it upon himself to come to the door. Seeing the terms, Adi accepted. Either of them expected that the Germany made it to the finals. The coach stroked the grass and said that it would be better if it rained a little so that their spiked sneakers would have an advantage. As soon as the words left his mouth, it did rain and the players took the field in their new Audi spiked shoes and won big. Taking the World Cup championship, Adidas was completely famous around the world. Back in the locker room, Adi leaned against the wall and fought back on the past with a lot of emotion. At that moment, Adi suddenly found a cardboard paper clamped on the table. Turning it over, he saw a message from his brother. Good job, brother. Adi smiled heartily. And from then on, the two brothers never worked together again. And their offspring made Adi and Puma better and became world-class brands. The two companies stand to this day and have lasted for over 100 years.